Hi, I'm Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'd like to show you how you can paint Lullaby Moon yourself at home. So get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. We're going to get started. All right, let's look at the materials that we're going to be doing for today's really easy tree painting. I have a 9 by 12 canvas board. This is pre-gessoed and you don't need to do another thing to it to start painting. Over here, I have a limited palette. There's actually only two colors. There's ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta, and then I'm using white paint. This is titanium white, and I'm going to be using a fluid black and a fluid white for part of the tree. That just means soft bodied. Listen, guys, the bottles of craft paint will work for this part. You just want something that isn't heavy bodied like this is. In the center here, I have acrylic glazing liquid gloss that helps me um, slow down the drying time of my paint and improve the flow. And I've got a bunch of tiny detail brushes for acrylic painting to help me with the fiddly bits. Let's put in our background and have a really good time doing this. So I'm going to look for a nice little bright at first to put in my moon. This seems really good. All right, so this is just a number four bright. So you see right there, number four bright, right? This is black pearl. I'm going to come over and I'm going to get the brush a little bit wet, drag off the extra water, and I'm gonna come and make just initially a dark purple, right? These, these two colors together make the prettiest colors. And I'm gonna come right here. If you imagine that this canvas is divided into fours, up here in the upper corner, I'm gonna make my moon that my tree will be holding. I really, really love um, all the really cool online stories of trees holding moons with like trick photography and uh, different ways people have told that story. So I looked really hard for a way to add to that story um, with my artistic voice. And this is actually based on a very popular painting I did from last year, Hope Swing, that everybody really liked. So this beautiful, ancient tree with cherry blossoms, you know, holding this moon kind of sprung out of that. Maybe that's, this is the rest of that story. So you can see I'm just making a circle right here. This determines the size of my moon and you can have it be kind of brush strokey. I'm going to rinse that brush out and put it to the side. And now I'm going to get, this is a one inch stiff white nylon brush. This is synthetic filaments. They're fairly stiff. And I'm going to get this wet and again, drag off the extra water. And right now I'm going to pull a little of my ultramarine out just on the tip of my bristles. And I'm going to get some of my white here. And this is going to be going around my moon in a circle. It's okay if some of the moon is blending in to my sky when I'm doing this. It'll just look like an aura, so don't worry about that. You're just wanting to use this nice moon that you have here in the center as a guide to help you make circular round strokes around it. The wonderful thing about these two colors, I'm gonna get this wet again, plot a little more ultramarine and a little more white. The wonderful thing about ultramarine and quinacridone is they always make the most beautiful color combos. So I always like visiting them for painting stories. I'm going to come around here on the edge of my brush, just kind of smoothing around my moon, rounding that out. And just see, making these round strokes so that there's a beautiful glow in the sky for the tree. Now as I'm going, I might let a little of the magenta, the little bit of the purple come into this story as we're going. Make sure that you're blending that. The two ways you get to blend that is that this paint is still wet and the paint blending into it is wet. And then of course, you can glaze or dry brush. So there's always ways to get that blend going. A little of the quinacridone. 
And a little of the ultramarine, making a nice purple. Then dip my brush in some water and pull that out. Get a little of my white, pull that out. See, so I'm getting a nice purple here. I'm just coming around. Um, I have a very big canvas. Uh, easel for, I have an easel for big canvases, and so I like to put something behind here to help stabilize it. You wouldn't have to do that if you were not painting on a tall standing easel. I'm just getting this maybe a little more white. I'm gonna brighten up this color story. There we go. There we go. And you can see how I'm blending and going around my moon, easily creating this dramatic sky on the flat of the brush. So easy. You got this. There we go, you just feather this. The other thing that I'm doing here is I have light brush pressure, so that really helps me. I'm gonna rinse out my brush. Rinse out my brush a little bit. And I'm gonna pull out my quinacridone. Let's get a little white here. Pull out my quinacridone and some white. There we go. Okay, some white, and we're gonna come here and start pinking up this sky, aren't we? Just a little bit pink. If you need to wipe off your brush, wipe off your brush. So I sometimes need to, I'm gonna pull out some more white. I want a lot of white on this. I want this to be a very, very light pink. Look at that. So it doesn't take a lot of the quinacridone I'm gonna rinse out because I'm getting a little purple in there and I don't want a lot of purple. A little more white. There we go. For this pink, pink sky. This reminds me a little bit of a gemstone sometimes. Just pulling that pigment in there into the white. Need some glazing medium or water. Just grab that. And just keep blending it out. I have left the canvas wrapping, uh, the, pa the plastic wrapping on the board that's supporting this behind me. So that way I don't lose that canvas for later. And that's just for the couple of you that are painting on big easels. So now I'm going to just work this guy. Make sure I'm happy with it. Rinse out my brush. Get my number four bright back and resolve the moon a little bit. So I still have a little bit of this fun purple here. And I have a bunch of white and I'm gonna come and get that on my brush. And I'm gonna shade my moon, I think, where it is lighter on the left side and it's gonna get darker on the right side. Kind of tells you where the sun is in the universe. Some of the little purple picks up into the white, and I want that. I want a little of that. Make sure I have some purple on there. Because we want it to have a bit of a shadow, just a light one so that shows up in the sky. Get a little of my darker purple here. Shading that out. Shading that out. See the back side? Working the back of the moon over here on the right hand side. Just little soft feathery strokes. Doesn't take a lot. Rinse out. And I think just a little more highlight. Come right here. There 
There we go. Just softly back and forth, creating that soft texture. When I'm happy with that, I'm going to dry that with my hair dryer so that I can put in my tree. All right, let me show you some strategies on how to really succeed at putting in this tree that will help you, especially if you're new to painting. So one of the things that I want to do is make I have a beautiful arc around the upper part of the sky and then join down into this very interesting bit of landscape. So I'm going to chalk in to help myself not get lost. And I like chalk because I can kind of erase chalk with a slightly damp cloth from acrylic paint. So the first thing I'm going to do is come up about three fingers right up here and make a little mark. And I'm going to wander a bumply little bit of cliff land over to the edge of my canvas. Okay. And I'm going to even have it be very cliff-like so we know that this tree is on a precipice. The other thing, this is, this is just kids chalk that I'm using. The other thing that I'm going to do is make sure that I have a nice curve so that the tree hugs my moon well. So I'm going to start at about the halfway place of the moon. I'm going to come up, curving out, 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 out. If it gets too far, see, I can just change my mind a little bit and smudge that out and come back in and make a nice curve. And that gives me a beautiful, I even want a more extreme curve than that, a beautiful angle to my tree. See how it goes, Woo! imagine you've got a Hot Wheel car there. And I can easily, easily, like I can even get a damp finger and just take that chalk right off if I need to. So that lets me change my mind really easily and make a plan for what I'm putting in. I'm going to put all of this in with a soft bodied paint. I'm using uh, this carbon black here, but keep in mind that any of the bottle paints from the craft store are also soft body. You just want the paint to be like kind of a low splat like this. And I'm going to paint in my landscape solid black. And I'm going to make sure that my landscape is interesting and bumpily. I might even get a slightly bigger brush to make short work of it. This is a number eight bright by Black Pearl. And so you can just paint in the entire landscape really easily, really fast. So this is in this nice moon shadow and is a silhouette. What makes this landscape beautiful are the little plants and grasses that live on it. And it's nice solid color. If you had Mars black, that would be fine. Any black paint you have for this is fine. All right. So once that's in, I'll get my nice small bright. And I'm going to do some of my trunk with it. I'm not going to try to do the delicate bit here. I'm going to take my trunk to maybe the curve with this brush. At first, curving this around. And I might let it even be a little bit bumpy because I want this tree to feel a titch old and ancient and smart. Like it's seen aeons. At the base here, I'm going to come out quite wide, almost an inch and a half. I'm going to curve this in. And my line's going to start intersecting the main trunk. And I want it to get quite delicate up at the top. I'm going to paint that all in solid. Painting that all in solid. Now the trick with fine lines and trees is the fluidity of the paint, that's how much it flows off your brush, how soft it is and how fluid it is. And the smallness and the edge and design of your brush. See here, even on this round, I can come really, really here on the edge. And as long as I'm lightening my pressure, get a pretty fine line before I even have to switch to a smaller brush. 
if you try to thin heavy bodied paint till it's super liquidy, then it gets runny and it doesn't perform well. So that's something to think about. Now I'm going to get a small detail brush to start working the finishing parts of this wonderful tree. So this little brush is very tiny. This is a number one round. Um, it is a Sterling Studio. I'm going to dip this. You can see that right in the tip of my paint there. And I'm going to come down here with this tree to hold on to my moon. See how delicate and fine the branches are getting? This is the, the smallness of my brush, the fluidity of the paint. I'm going to bring a little branch in here. Bring a tiny little branch in here. Just remember that your branches that come off, I'm going to wander one out here down the midway. I'm going to wander one out here. It's going to Meander, look at that. It meanders, it's holding on. I might thicken this up just a titch and thicken it up just a smidge up here. So trees are ever diminishing. The older they are and the longer they've grown out, the finer it is. And branches that come off of a tree are always smaller than what they're attached to. So that's just something to think about when you're adjusting that. Another thing as a new painter is that you might want to make your branches too short. Just remember to go long like in football. See I'm wiggling those out. What's also wonderful is anywhere these little branches are I get to put wonderful little clusters of flowers which I am really gonna like. I'm gonna make a little branch that comes off here and comes down. Look at that, it's gonna come around here. So you can see how the paint and this brush is letting me really do this. Now periodically I'm gonna to wanna to wash it and dry it out just to manage expectations. In my experience, unless you're in watercolor or oils, detail brushes don't last forever in acrylic. So take as good of a care of them as you can. Don't leave them in water wash them out well after use. Look at that nice fine line. Be sure and reshape them. They'll, they'll go a lot longer for you if you take care of them. Try to keep a bunch of them around too. That is one of my strategies is just to have a bunch of detail brushes around. I'm gonna break a branch out here. Look at all these. This is like doodling. In my in my mind right I feel like there needs to be a branch that comes down and holds kind of the opposite way look at that that interesting crookedy little branch it comes down into this moon Yeah, I'm breaking this around. If you've gardened at all, you can think about those things you know from gardening to help you plan your branches. You can imagine that each of these little intersections is a bud and would therefore maybe sprout another branch. But that's what's super fun about all of this is just trying to imagine all of these delicate branches coming together and creating this amazing tree. I think we need to balance out and have a branch come from up here and wander out that way. Just flowing along. Look at 
that. It's just really beautiful, right? And maybe another one right here. Notice that I'm resting my pinky different places to try to hold my hand steady. If you have a situation where your hand is not steady, my advice is artists I know that have gone through that, they make it a feature. They lean into it. They're like, all right, my lines aren't going to be steady. So I'm going to embrace having shaky lines. You know, don't try to set conditions that your painting experience should be exactly like somebody else's painting experience. I'm going to thicken this a little bit so it can support some stronger branches. You'll see me every once in a while roll off the excess paint there and reload. I'm going to bring a branch maybe that comes here and comes around. Just have fun using the detail. Have fun. Because the really good bit is that you get to put little flowers on it later. And you want this to be an interesting, special, mystical tree. Another good strategy is to dry your painting periodically as you're doing these detail branches. That way, if you're resting your hand, you're not dragging it through white paint. Since blending isn't an important part of this stage of the painting, having the painting be dry periodically will probably actually help you out. Just wandering this along, wiggling it out. Every time I'm trying to lighten my line, I'm pulling the brush away from the canvas. I'm playing a game of how lightly can I touch the canvas and still maintain contact with the canvas. Pull a little branch out here for balance. There we go. I'm going to dry this real quick so that I can keep resting my hand and maintaining as steady of a stroke as possible. Let's keep putting in branches. So I'm feeling like I need another little branch coming back here above this one. I try not to line up my branches like directly across from each other on a tree. They can be, but I like them to just be a little off center. Even in a fantasy tree. Just keep adding beautiful little branches coming out. Beautiful little branches. This one could have a low one coming on here. And you can see how having the painting dry so I can steady my hand helps me. I'm going to add another little branch coming out this way. You can also rotate a canvas if you find that you're working to an uncomfortable angle. Painting is meant to be relaxing and help you stretch your imagination and creativity a little bit. So you should do everything you can to keep your comfort levels high. Remember not to get frustrated if there's mistakes. I've done a lot of uh, videos where I talk about how you can just correct any mistake in art once the painting is dry. Because once the paint is dry, you can just go over it with white 
and then repaint the color back in that you had so you don't have to feel trapped in your experience. This branch down here low, I'm gonna let be a little more crookedy. I'm gonna get a little more paint on my brush and is gonna be a little bit thicker. See like that, crookedy and thicker. Maybe I'll move my tree like this so I'm painting at my comfort. So that's just something to think about. See, paint to your comfort. If you find your neck or body or any part of you is just not comfortable, not happy, remember your canvas moves. So always move your canvas before you move yourself. Something I forget to do when I'm teaching because I'm always thinking about the positioning of the student more than I necessarily think about the positioning of my own posture. And then I would notice that um, students were mimicking that and I was like, oh, I need to remind people to find their comfort. So notice how long I'm making these lines. The reasons we don't fast forward through these segments is so that you can see it happening and you have a measured expectation of how long something takes. I'm gonna come right here and I'm gonna add my last branch. This one's going to come up, maybe reach up this way, because that's interesting. You can see how the fluid paint really is on my team. You know, you don't have to have a particular tool or medium to do things in art. I've seen people, I've even done artwork in coffee myself. You know, the magic of the art is definitely in you. But having a great tool, for sure, helps your experience a bit. I like that. Now I'm gonna really enjoy, I'm gonna rinse this out. I'm gonna really, really enjoy making some um, longish grass strokes. I think this has a good point on it right now, so I'm gonna test that. This, is a script liner, a two over zero script liner. And it does a very nice grass if you've never gotten to use it. You could keep using your other detail. My trick with grass is, I'm gonna come here and make a little cluster that goes up the opposite way, is I try not to create clones. And I try to imagine that wind is blowing through it and it changes the directions of the blades. See, don't think that like tools like this are just inherently expensive because they're not. And you've got to find your own jam in your own studio. So you can see how I'm just making these delicate, delicate little little lines and I'm sometimes I'm arcing them to the right or to the left, creating this depth of ground cover. And also, I feel that it creates a flow in the painting that's very enjoyable. All right, so I'm going to have a couple little clusters of grass here. They're blowing out. I'm gonna do an interesting thing and not have them there maybe as if there's a little patch of empty space there, bare earth. Maybe somebody stands there and sits there a lot. It's 
just fun to make grassy little lines. And then I'm going to add just a little cluster here as if a seed has landed in an impossible place. And when that is all done, rinse this out. And I am going to grab my dotting tool and we're going to finish up the cherry blossoms on this stunning painting. Can you believe you've done this? Well, I'm so excited for you. All right, let's get our dotting tools and put out our fluid white paint. So you can see this is soft body too. How it's different than the white paint there, which is very stiff and is still holding its body. When this dries, it won't change shape or height at all. This is self-leveling and is perfect for dotting projects like mandalas and all of those fun projects that you see on Pinterest. I have here a dotting tool. You can use the back of a brush or a toothpick. So please don't feel limited in any way. And I'm gonna start planting little flowers and some of my dots to be smaller. I enjoy that. Anywhere I've got the edge of a branch, I can put a little cluster of flowers. I like some of my dots to be bigger at the edges of my branches. Try to see the areas that maybe you're excelling and be forgiving of those places that you're starting to learn. Being new at something is wonderful and you're not supposed to be good at everything the first time you try. Coloring is fun and painting is fun just because it's fun to do. So take a minute to appreciate that you've given yourself a little time to do something just because it brings joy into the quality of your life. See if there's any spots that bug you, anything that you want to change. And if you're happy, you can sign it. I think I'm going to use my black paint. I'm going to turn my canvas on the side here. And I'm going to look for a spot, a weird spot to sign it. And I think I'm going to sign it right here. Very subtly. So it looks like part of the grass. Just a little bit of a signature. That makes me happy. I hope you had fun. I hope you enjoyed yourself and really got into laying down your flowers and branches. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.